When we talked about the battle for the ratification of the Constitution, we discussed the Anti-Federalists and their major contribution to our government, that they fought for and ultimately won the concession of a Bill of Rights. So the first 10 amendments to the Constitution were proposed in the first Congress by Madison, and these ultimately were ratified and are what we call the Bill of Rights. Now Madison, you'll notice, was one of the Federalists. They were arguing against the Anti-Federalists, right? They said, we don't need a Bill of Rights. In fact, they argued pretty fervently against adding a Bill of Rights. Now that seems odd, right? He's proposing it later. He, he obviously, Madison certainly believed in these fundamental rights that we fought a revolution for. Why didn't he want to list them in the Constitution? Well, his reasoning and the reasoning of the Federalists as well as many others who thought a Bill of Rights was a bad idea, wasn't that we actually don't want to list them because we want to be able to limit them, but rather we don't want to list them because listing them might limit our rights. Now, that seems counterintuitive, right? What do I mean by that? What I mean is if we list our rights, what happens to the rights we don't list? Do we have those? So the Bill of Rights lists many different positive and negative rights. The First Amendment, for example, lists five specific negative rights. Freedoms from the government, freedom of religion, of speech, press, assembly, and petition. What would happen if we listed four out of those five, if we hadn't listed, say, the right to petition our government? Would we have that right to petition the government? Is that somewhere, is that somehow guaranteed if it's not listed? Or could the government then prevent us from petitioning them? Could they ban petitions, outlaw them? We don't really know, right? There are ways to argue that no, they couldn't. But there are also ways to argue that yes, they could. So if that right hadn't been listed, it might've been able to be limited. And that's what Madison was afraid of. What if we've forgotten something? What if there's a right that we take for granted that we don't even think needs to be listed because no government would ever try to infringe on it? it Maybe the right to privacy, which was so fundamentally enshrined in the concepts of British common law that the framers might not have thought it needed protection. Or perhaps they just didn't foresee changes that would happen in the future that would make the protection of certain rights necessary. Again, returning to privacy, it's much easier for the government to invade our privacy these days, right? Technology is advanced in ways that the framers could never have foreseen. So if they had known about the internet and parabolic microphones and the ability of the government to tap our phones, would they have written a right to privacy into the Bill of Rights? We don't know, <laughs> but that was Madison's concern, right? That Maybe they meant us to have a right to privacy, but they didn't think to say it that way. So now that right can be infringed upon. Or at least there's a debate over whether we have that right or not. And again, that is what Madison feared, which is why he drafted the Ninth Amendment, which basically guarantees us our unenumerated rights. It says that the listing of rights in the Bill of Rights is not meant to deny or disparage are other rights, these unenumerated or unlisted rights. This, however, is so broad that it's not a particularly great legal foundation for rights because how do we know what rights weren't meant to be disparaged or denied? What rights really were meant to not be included? Were there th freedoms that they thought we shouldn't have protected? So we tend to not use this amendment very much in legal arguments. But Madison included it to help allay the fears of people who said a Bill of Rights would actually limit our rights rather than guarantee them.